Hello everyone, my name is Veronika Piurek and I am a curatorial intern at Alpha Art Gallery. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this interview with Harold Olejas, whose work you can see at a current Alpha Art Gallery exhibition, Shifted Nature. Hello Harold, how are you? Hello, I'm fine. I'm looking forward to uh, answering uh, your questions about my work. You are changing the context of the artworks, especially with your pieces from the 90s, the performances, the wearable art pieces. You make them more accessible to the people. Um, you take them out of the gallery space. I was wondering what inspired you to do so? Well, um, I was really um, inspired by the work that I was doing. Um, I was working on life-size figures and I wanted uh, my work to appeal to a broader audience. Um, I was a member of a artist-run gallery in Soho in the late 70s, early 80s, mm -hmm. and getting people into exhibitions was a real chore, and it was disappointing to have so few people see my work. So while I was working on one of these life-size figures, I got the idea if I could put myself into the sculpture, then I could present my work in more public venues like uh, museums, galleries, and street corners. And did you ever get any weird feedback from people? How did they react? Um, well, it was always very exciting because it was so interactive. People would be fooled by my performance and then they would sort of slide back and wait for somebody else to get fooled. <laughs> um, I did unannounced go to the New Jersey State Museum in Trenton and I walked in and installed myself and the security guards there got very, very upset and they hauled me off into their office. Uh, fortunately, I was rescued oh, wow. by a curator who was familiar with my work and invited me to participate um, in a reception they were having at the museum at the time. Through your artistic career, you have been experimenting with uh, different materials and techniques. And can you tell us which one were the biggest challenges to you and um, which one are your favorites to work with? Well, the biggest challenge is working on a large figural sculpture, just uh, between making an armature and I was building these pieces out of little chips of wood. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, quite a challenge to do that. Um, and now working digitally, I just feel as though um, it's so suited to where I'm at at this point. I have a very good interaction with the digital technology right. and feel as I can get a lot done with that. You use a lot of technology in creating your art, and for me, the most fascinating aspect of your creations are your digital images, especially the ones made with the scanner. And the fact that it was a way of showing how uh, technology perceives the visual information and how it records it. Um, can you tell us more about them? Yes, um, the scanner images were sort of a bridge between the performance art and the digital imaging. Mm -hmm. um, I realized that a scanner uh, creates an image by building one line at a time and so I performed on the scanner bed. I would take my hands and wind up almost choreographing a dance for the scanner. Um, at the end of the scan I would see the image and then many times I would see where I needed to make adjustments to my performance so to speak. And so I would redo that and sometimes after five or ten tries I would wind up with an image that I felt really expressed what I wanted to say. So in a way, you never knew what would be the result. You just have to experiment each time and adjust and change things. Yeah, it was a very sort of experimental process and um, the more I did it, the more I, I became uh, aware of how to sort of work with the scanner to create the effect that I wanted to. Let's talk about your round prints displayed at Alpha Art Gallery current exhibition. Tell us more about the techniques you are using to create them. Well, I start with one of my photographs um, and I look for something that appeals to me in the photograph. Uh, I enhance the photograph and then I duplicate the layer and I, I, man I maneuver the layers to sort of get a slice of the image that I feel works. And then I keep making new slices and adding that. So it's a 360 degree round circular image in the end. And did you experiment before with another shape before choosing a round one? Yeah, um, I did a series of collages, sort of a little like what David Hockney did. David Hockney took um, photographs and sort of collaged them together and create images that were not necessarily rectangular. 
and I did the same thing. Some of them wound up being circular, a lot of them uh, were sort of these very odd shapes depending on what I was actually photographing. So uh, I would just take a lot of different photographs from different points of view and then put them all together, collage them into one large, uh, larger image. When I look at some of your prints, uh, if I wouldn't see the title, I would have absolutely no idea what I'm looking at, which I love because it allows me to put my own interpretation onto your works. And I was wondering, how would you like your art to be perceived by the audience? Well, uh, there's sort of two levels of perception, I guess. The first one is the initial reaction, and that's usually from a distance, someone will see something. Mm -hmm. Um, and in that case, I want the sort of the color and the forms and the shape to sort of spark a curiosity and an interest in the image. And then as the person approaches the image and gets closer, they can look at the details and get involved in how all the shapes, the forms and the colors interact and get drawn into the image. I want to mention now one of my absolutely favorite piece of yours, which is Pepito Chili Peppers. Um, I see a very detailed, constructed, outstanding abstract form. Um, how does your creation process look like in this example? Did you already had in mind the vision, how it's going to look like before taking the picture or um, did you experiment with it while creating the shapes? Well, all, all the images that I do, um, I, I have sometimes I have a sort of a vague sense, but for the most part it is experimenting mm -hmm. and, and seeing what happened. But that image grew out of the COVID-19 quarantine where I couldn't really travel that much because of, well, everyone was limited because of the quarantine. So one of the big adventures for me was going to the market and buying fruits and vegetables. Um, and when I was there, I started getting involved in the display of the fruit and vegetables and the images. Uh, so I took my iPhone out and started taking pictures of uh, the food displays and that got me involved in doing foods. Um, and then I also started looking at different foods to work with and I was sort of drawn to the chili peppers because of the long sort of stringy appearance of them. So I bought uh, two bags of those and brought them home and set them up on a copy stand and photographed them. So sometimes I would photograph uh, the food in the, in the shops and sometimes I would buy things and photograph them at home on a copy stand. Well, I'm very happy that this difficult situation, in fact, made you create this amazing series of photographs of food. What is the most important for you when you are creating your digital images? Is it the shape or the color? Well, it's really the whole gestalt. I mean, it's the shape, the color, uh, what is a picture of, um, how the different layers interact with one another, what happens when the shapes of the colors are repeated, and how that sort of creates an image. So um, I'm really looking at a lot of different things when I start to construct one of these images. And they are really constructed like one slice at a time um, and each slice being rotated a certain number of degrees so that it winds up in a more circular shape. Can you tell us how do you choose the themes of your works? Because um, you've been creating images with Flora, fauna, minerals, bikes, cars, I mean, the list goes on. <laughs> but I've noticed you don't have many images uh, with representation of the people. Um, is it your artistic choice? The first part is the question is the themes really um, come out of the work. Um, I, you know, I find that in terms of the cars I was interested in, I just started getting interested in photographing cars and the design of cars and how the colors of the the exterior and how the forms are defined. And so I wound up taking pictures of cars and making images from that. And the more I did that, after a while I had five, 10 or 15 of these images. And I thought, well, this is a theme now. I've done so many images. So the themes really come out of the work. I uh, become interested in one subject. And then um, as that evolves, that becomes a theme. Um, in terms of people, I did do a uh, photograph of myself and sort of worked with, worked with it in that sort of circular format, but I was not happy with the result. But I have used images of like Van Gogh and American Gothic, and I've used those in uh, images. And, and that seems to work when I'm dealing with a figure in a broader context, then I think that works. But as a singular portrait, it doesn't really quite work. Which one of the artwork that they are currently displayed at Alpha Art Gallery exhibition Shifted Nature is your favorite one? 
um, to which one you are the most attached to? Well, I really um, am, am sort of engaged with the um, the view of the Hudson from the Whitney Museum. Um, that was one of the first pieces where um, the the sort of the broader shape from a distance, when you look at it, it looks like a sort of a sci science fiction spaceship. Um, and then on closer inspection, you can see that it is really the screen and, and it is, if you're familiar with the Whitney, you may be able to put that together. Mm -hmm. But um, it just, the image sort of was so transformed from what the interior of the Whitney looked like. And then of course, there are the couple of little people sprinkled in there. And that sort of adds a whole other sort of mystery to the picture. These were all my questions, Harold. Thank you very much for being with us today. It was my pleasure talking to you. Oh, it was my pleasure too. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.